Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being on Mayor Randall Woodfin's Teletown Hall with city employees. Thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you for your service. A couple of things to remind you uh, on this call. If you have any questions that you would like to ask during this call, you can press 7 on your dial pad. Press 7 on your dial pad. You'll immediately be connected to a screener who can uh, take your question, and we will then see it in our computer system so we can ask that question. Um, again, press 7 on your dial pad. In addition, we will have questions to ask to you, and I will explain momentarily how you can respond to those poll questions. Uh, we we uh, have many people on this line right now, a lot of folks calling in that are being screened on their calls, so we'll, we will be moving through as quickly as, as possible. So with that, uh, let me now turn this over, this call over to Mayor Woodfin. Hey, good afternoon, city employees. This is uh, Mayor Randall Woodfin. Let me first start by thanking you all for being on this call. Um, I want to jump right in. I imagine, um, actually I know, based on conversations with many of you all on this call, there's real fear, there's real anxiety, there's real concern, and there are a lot of questions among our employees. So the purpose of this call is to share what we're doing um, around certain things, and then I want to open it up. And when I say open it up, we're going to take as many questions as you all want to give us, and we're going to answer, answer them. <clears throat> if I don't have the answer, I will tell you that and make sure we follow up with you. Um, starting off with this, many of you all know the city of Birmingham as a city like many other cities across the nation, is in the middle of a health um, crisis pandemic. And with that, um, city employees have been defined as essential services. And many of you all are questioning, why do I have to continue to work? Um, I want to stop there and share this. All of us on this phone don't have the luxury of a six-degree separation. Many of us know someone right now in the last week or two weeks, family or friend, family member or friend, that has been laid off or furloughed from their job. And so just to step back for a moment for all of us to have an appreciation for actually still being employed and having the ability to work every day, whether we're working from home or having to come in. As I stated on our last call, there's so many people in this community 212,000 residents, the largest city in the state, so many residents are depending on us um, for some sense of normalcy as it relates to how they interact with their daily lives. Many of you all on this call are not only employees, you're residents as well. Um, many of you all have an expectation right now that a grocery store has to remain open because you have to get groceries to feed you and your family. You have an expectation that the bank has to remain open um, because you have to um, you have to conduct business there. You have an expectation that the gas station remains open because many of you all, even while at home, some of you all still have to get from point A to B. Um, those same type of fair, realistic expectations are the same fair, realistic expectations that residents have for all of us on this phone call. Residents have an expectation that when they put out their trash, we as city employees are responsible for still picking it up. Um, many residents have an expectation, but if there is an issue in the community that's required um, for them to dial 911, that someone is on the other end of that call and we pick up the phone. They also have an expectation that if they need a police officer, that officer is supposed to show up. They also have an expectation that if there is a fire or medical issue, that someone from our fire rescue service department is supposed to show up. And I can go on and on giving examples about how many of you all on this phone call and all the city of Birmingham employees, um, we provide services for our residents because that's what we're called to do when we signed up for this job. And like many of you, um, I know it's hard right now, but we will get through this. And I want to encourage you and remind you of this. Um, as Maya Angela said, um, all storms run out of rain. We will get through this tough moment. But in the meantime, while while we're in this moment, um, I think it's important for you all to know that you are appreciated. 
you all are valued, and we will do everything we can to continue to protect you while you're on your job. With that, I want to turn to a couple of tangible things we've done to engage and protect you, starting with hazard pay. Um, hazard pay, we continue to be in conversation with the Jefferson County Personnel Board. Jefferson County Personnel Board first defined who qualify, what hazard pay is and who qualifies for hazard pay, so I think it's important that I share that with you. The Jefferson County Personnel Board indicated to, this, um, to our team that hazard premium pay would be applicable to employees working in situations that have high potential for exposure to COVID-19 through direct public contact. So that's through direct public contact. Examples include public safety, healthcare, or frontline customer service positions with regular direct customers contact during the period of this pandemic. That means that every employee will not qualify. Of all our employees, roughly about 1,900 of us qualify for this. Um, based on this guidance, um, we've listed those departments and we listed the number of those employees within those departments that qualified for this. So there may be some people in your department that get it. There may be some people in your department that don't get it. And there may be some departments no one gets it at all. In addition to that, the Jefferson County Personnel Board shared with us that we can do 5% of a base salary of hours worked. And so I wanted to make that clear. I know a lot of um, you all were concerned about this, and we did everything we can um, to provide hazard pay. This hazard pay is for the next two pay periods, and that's a roughly about 30 days. And so um, we're not in a position to talk about if this will continue to um, the month of May. We found this money. This money was repurposed for events that could not continue in April because of the COVID-19. So we basically transferred money that was purposed for something else but was not able to happen because um, those events were canceled and those projects were canceled. And so I wanted to give an update on the hazard pay. The second thing I wanted to talk about is cleaning. Um, as you all know, um, the Department of Public Works has our internal teams and in various buildings that continue to uh, come by uh, frequently uh, within the eight hours. Um, a lot of times, at least every hour in these, some of these areas, continuing to, to clean doorknobs, um, elevator buttons, um, as well as equipment and other things, um, the light switch, et cetera. That's important. In addition to that, we've contracted with a, a third-party organization that's providing deep cleans uh, every weekend, either Friday or Saturday, for City Hall, uh, for the, the jail, as well as the police uh, headquarters, and at least one other building, municipal court. That's important because these buildings have the highest frequency as it relates to the public coming in who are not employees. So we have an extra layer of cleaning. Um, so cleaning is taking place every daily from our internal team, and we are having deep cleans either either every Friday or every Saturday in those four main buildings that the public um, is interacting with our facilities. The next thing tangible I want to talk about is what we're doing to protect our employees is um, PPE. Um, I want to first give you the status of the order that was placed. So many of you all know we went before the council. They agreed to provide um, funding. We placed the orders those departments that actually need PPE. Uh, I'm happy to say that uh, PPE will um, actually, that shipment will be here this week. So all of the departments will be able to re-up and there will be no shortages. Um, and everyone who needs it will have access to it. So as it relates to hazard pay, as it relates to cleaning, and as it relates to PPE, um, these are some of the tangible ways and some of the tangible things we've done to continue to protect our employees. At this point, um, what I want to do um, is pause. I'm going to turn it back over to Rick Journey because the majority of this call is set up to answer your questions. 
And so he will facilitate our Q&A, and then I will have some closing comments as it relates to um, the financial hardship, not only that the small businesses and hourly workers in the private sector are experiencing, but what does that mean to the city of Birmingham and what does that mean for our employees? At this point, I turn it over to Rick Journey. Thank you, Mayor. Just as I mentioned earlier, uh, if you have a question during this call, you can press 7 on your dial pad. Again, press 7 on your dial pad. You will be connected to a screener who will receive your question and put it into the computer system where we can see it and we can follow up with that. We have many questions that are on and we're going to go through as many of these questions as we can. Let me start, though, with a poll question for you. Our first question do you feel you have received adequate information regarding COVID-19 from your department? Again, the question, do you feel you have received adequate information regarding COVID-19 from your department? Press 1 for yes, press 2 for no. Again, press 1 for yes, press 2 for no. We will have this question open for about three minutes. Now let's go to our first question uh, from callers today. This first question, what's the difference in working a 5-8 schedule and a 4 -tens? How will that help us keep the distance? All right. The, um, the question centered around what's the difference between working 5-8s and, and 4 -tens. Um As of next week, the, the Department of Public Works employees uh, will all shift to the, one of the following, either tasks or 4 -tens. And we're doing this because we are trying to uh, make sure that employees are less, have less exposure um, to possibly um, being exposed to anything that exists in the community and come into contact with the COVID-19. So the four tens or tasks, the whole idea is simple. We want to give employees more time and being away at work. And so instead of being off only two days, we wanted to give our employees during this time temporarily an extra day off. Um, that's the whole idea of that. Thank you, Mayor. Loading up our next question now. This person says, I work in parks and recreation and have not qualified for hazardous pay. Why? Again, in talking with the Jefferson County Personnel Board, they define um, how what employees would be considered qual being qualified for hazard pay. So um, many people can work in a certain department, but if you don't have regular, direct customer or citizen contact, then you wouldn't qualify. Okay, our next question. Uh, this person, uh, will grass cutting employees receive hazardous pay? Um, the answer is yes. So our next question, what will be done about summer pool workers? So this is tough. And what my answer right now to you all is not completely baked because this is a moving target in the sense of we've never had something like this happen right at the exact same time we're supposed to be hiring those workers. As many of you all know, pools are currently closed. So we're not necessarily in a position right now um, to have already started our process of hiring these lifeguards. In addition to that, most of these lifeguards are usually um, college students, um, but because school has been out for most of these colleges, um, that has uh, interfered with our process as well. So this answer is not complete. Uh, the truth is, not sure yet, don't know yet, and we continue to work through this until we come up with an adequate answer to provide to not only you all, but to the community as well. And as you mentioned, Mayor, a lot of this has to do with what the stay-at-home orders uh, will be over a period of time. That's correct. As you currently know, the stay-at-home order is until the end of April, everybody, and we, at this point, in an ideal world, if we are intentional as a community and as residents and as individuals of policing ourselves, in the ideal world, we can get back to our regular way of life in May. But if people continue to circumvent or tiptoe around this, then this can extend to May. If this extends to May, that puts our pool 
not being able to be open more in jeopardy. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, just a reminder for you, uh, we currently have a question open for a poll question for you. I'm going to read it one more time. If you haven't answered, you will have about 15 seconds uh, to, to uh, answer this. The uh, question, do you feel that you have received adequate information regarding COVID-19 from your department? Press 1 for yes, press 2 for no. You'll have another 15 seconds to respond to this, and then we will close that question. So our next question from callers. Who is, and, and, and let me just uh, preface it by saying that we are receiving a lot of questions in particular about hazard pay. We want to try to answer as many of them, but some of these very specific, we're not going to be able to answer them all because we want to try to get a wide variety of questions as well. Uh, who is included in hazard pay and does it apply to the records department of the police department? Um, it does not apply to the records department. So, um, this is an interesting topic, and I will keep answering as much as I need to over this call, and I'll keep sharing with you how it's, how it's who qualifies. If you do not deal with the public on a daily basis, if you don't come into contact with the public on a daily basis in your job, interacting with people who are not employees, then you do not qualify for hazard pay. And so... Regular direct customer contact. In order to receive hazard pay, you have to have regular direct customer contact with people who are not city employees. Thank you, Mayor. Our next question, why is recycling not canceled in all neighborhoods? Those workers who are catering to those neighborhoods in the pilot program will not have a day off and that doesn't seem fair when recycling is canceled for the other neighborhoods. So in this situation, we try to strike a balance. We have um, two routes that are a part of a pilot recycling program that we wanted to strike a balance of honoring that pilot program that started April 1st and continuing um, finding a way to make honor this pilot program for those res residents who wanted to participate in it, but giving some balance to our employees who won't have that additional day. Right now, the team is looking hard at finding a way to offset that for that group of employees. Um, that group of employees is a very small number, but they're doing a yeoman's job and a Herculean task of staying committed to this pilot program. Um, and I imagine they know the extra effort they're taking that their colleagues is not participating in, that they're adding the uh, added value and service to the community because that's what they signed up to do. But we are looking at creative ways of making sure um, we can offer something else to bring relief to that small group of employees. Thank you, Mayor. Before we ask our next question, let me, uh, let me uh, offer another poll question for you. This question is dealing with uh, protocols. Do the COVID-19 protocols that have been put into place make you feel safer? Again, the question, do the COVID-19 protocols that have been put into place make you feel safer? Press 1 for much safer, press 2 for somewhat safer, and press 3 for not much safer. Again, do the COVID-19 protocols that have been put in place make you feel safer? Press 1 for much safer, press 2 for somewhat safer, and plus, press 3 for not much safer. We have about three minutes where we'll be taking that question and getting your responses to that question. Now let's move to our next question from callers. Okay, our next question, and this comes from uh, Birmingham Fire and Rescue, uh, a, a, a employee there. We have questions we're supposed to ask patients related to their symptoms, but all they have to do to, is say no to one of the questions, and we downgrade the level of PPP, PPE we wear. Will something change in terms of the level of PPE required, or do we keep going as is? So that's a really... Um that's a really powerful question. Um, I want to start with the human behavior of 
of, of residents we come into contact with that the fire and rescue service of, um, employees come into contact with. I, of course, you all should be heightened based on um, the ability of a person to tell you what they feel or don't feel. Um, I think one of the best ways to deal with this is, is we can talk with Chief Moon and Corello, and I think they can issue um, a, a PSA, a public service announcement, on addressing this issue and making sure residents are more candid and open about their sy symptoms and the reason they should be so we can protect them and we can protect ourselves. I think the other thing as it relates to PPE, um, Chief Moon continues to give us daily updates and weekly updates around equipment and how it should be used as, as, as of course, this is fluid, and if any adjustments need to be made, um, Chief Moon will only, only be working, making, making those recommendations to us. Um, he'll be making them to his team members on the ground to make sure you all are protected as well. Thank you, Mayor. Our next question, uh, again, this is a hazard pay question. Are the dispatchers included in the consideration for a hazardous pay for the police department? If not, why? <laughs> The reason why that, so let me answer the question. The answer is no. Um, you all make contact only by phone. And so dispatchers, 911, 311, um, you all do not make any actually regular, direct, physical customer contact that would put you in any way of catching the COVID-19 because you're not engaging um, the public in the space where you have to physically interact with them. That's why you don't qualify. Thank you, Mayor. So I want to ask the uh, poll question one more time. We will close it out uh, about 15 seconds after I ask this. Our current poll question, uh, do the COVID-19 protocols that have been put in place make you feel safer? Press one for much safer, press two for somewhat safer, and press three for not much safer. If you have not responded to that, you have 15 seconds, and then we will close that out and move on to our next question. Our next question from callers. The email we received yesterday didn't name, or this is concerning. Let me start over. This is concerning the email employees received yesterday. We don't need the name, but at least the area where this person worked, especially pertaining to elevators. Right, so here's the best way I can answer this question. Um, an employee, while at work, um, received a call that they had tested positive. They immediately told their um, his supervisor. Their supervisor alerted HR. Uh, we implemented our protocols of removing that employee from the workspace and began our tracking and tracing as it relates to who this employee had come into contact with as well as any equipment or area they, they came into contact with. We understand, we have now identified those other people this employee has come into contact with, as well as remove that person's um, equipment out of service. In addition to that, um, as stated, the Department of, Pu of Public Works continues to clean this building daily. Many of you all have noticed, um, not only are they cleaning inside of elevators and doors and light switches, uh, but we've also implemented the following. Um, if a door can be open, it should remain open so less people are touching doors. In addition to that, um, we have gone to not only having hand sanitizer outside of our elevators, but having hand sanitizer inside our elevators. And in addition to that, Public Works frequently in this building um, is cleaning everywhere between 45 minutes to every hour um, all, the, all the common spaces that um, we use in this building, which includes elevators. Thank you, Mayor. Our next question from callers. When does the 1% COLA raise take effect? I believe our HR Director, Ms. Jill Medizic, is joining us now for that answer to that question. Good afternoon. When the city approves a COLA, it has to go to the Personnel Board of Jefferson County for them to create the new pay schedule. Once we receive those new pay schedules, it will take us about two weeks to implement the increase after that point in time. At this point, we have not received those pay schedules from the personnel board. Generally, it usually takes about two months from the time it is approved until the time it is paid. And some of the 
employees who have been here for a long period of time know that generally it does take about that 60 days. Thank you, Ms. Medizic. Let's go on to our next question now that we'd like to ask to you. Uh, this deals with contact with persons with symptoms. Have you come into contact with anyone who you believe has had COVID-19 symptoms? Again, have you come into contact with anyone who you believe has had COVID-19 symptoms? Press one for yes, press two for no. You will have three minutes to answer this question. Hey, uh, we just want to let you know because we have received some messages and text messages from some people who have not been able to get on the line. So what we are doing, uh, if you're receiving it from coworkers who are asking it on the line, uh, we are sending another outbound push uh, to the phone numbers that we have on file uh, for uh, employees. So that call should be coming in to folks who are not able to get on. Uh, they will be, within the next two minutes or so, they'll be receiving that call and they will be able to answer and be brought into this. So if you receive any contact from a coworker who is asking that question, we are doing another outbound push to bring them in. Uh, so, so that is happening right now. I will go on and remind you again of the current poll that we have. Uh, this question, um, I'll close this out in about 30 seconds, but the last time I'll ask for it, have you come into contact with anyone who you believe has had COVID-19 symptoms? Press one for yes, press two for no. We will close that in 30 seconds. Another reminder for you, if you have a question, you can press seven on your dial pad. Uh, you'll be connected to a screener. You will be able to ask a question of the screener and it will be put into the system. We have many questions. A lot of them are very similar on hazard pay. We're answering that question repeatedly, but we want to also get to other topics as well. Uh, so please be patient as we move this through. One other reminder, you can listen to this and let your coworkers know we will post this call online within an hour after it's complete on the BirminghamAL.gov slash coronavirus. And that'll be an opportunity for you to re-listen to this call or share it with coworkers who are not able to be on. For our next question, this deals with the cleaning contract for the city. Why hasn't the deep cleaning been done on a weekly basis at police precincts? It's only occurred once and has yet to be rescheduled, according to this question. Uh, this is an issue we will solve. Um, the good news is we just had a deep clean at our precincts um, last week. We're now taking bids um, to continue that service, and so there will be a short gap, but we hope to expedite this as fast as we can making sure the deep clean that we're doing at City Hall, Municipal Court, the jail, as well as the admin building of our police department is extended to the four precincts as well. All right, thank you, Mayor. Uh, as we continue on, this is a question from DPW. Uh, will PPE be distributed to DPW? The answer is yes. Stand by. One word answers make me have to take a second to get to the next question. I apologize. Just one moment. Is there a possibility that employees currently working from home may be furloughed? This is a really good question. It's going to be a very long answer, so bear with me. Um, there is no separation of employees working from home versus employees having to come to work. We are not at a point where we, where we are addressing any furlough. But I think it's very important, based on this question, um, that I was going to wait to the end to share this information that I'm going to share with you. And it's very simple. Um, no decision is being made. Right, one decision is being made right now, and that decision is to do everything I can to keep every city employee employed. All right? That's period. I want to repeat that. Every decision I am making every decision the leadership team is making is designed to keep every city employee employed. But we are in tough times and I need to help. I want to walk our employees through how we receive a dollar and how that dollar goes out. When I say receive a dollar, meaning the city's ability 
to provide city services and the city's ability um, to pay employees is based on what comes into the city. What comes into the city is usually in the form of sales tax, occupational tax, use tax, lodging tax, business license, permitting fees, property taxes, and a few other things. The business license, sales tax, use tax, occupational tax, and lodging tax makes up 85, over 80 cent of each dollar the city of Birmingham brings in. I want to repeat that. Business license, sales tax, use tax, occupational tax, and lodging tax, which is from hotels, make up over 80 cents of every dollar that the city of Birmingham brings in. Well, I want you all to imagine, um, I gave the example of a, a employee yesterday. They said if they had their business, they would open up a nail shop, which was a great example because nail shops are currently closed based on the health department shutting them down. Well, if your nail shop is closed, then your employees can't work. If your employee is not working, then the city of Birmingham is not receiving occupational taxes. If your customers can't come in and get their nails done, then the city of Birmingham is not receiving sales taxes. If the BJCC is not having events, then no one is coming into our city to stay at our hotels, so the city of Birmingham is not collecting lodging taxes. If a business can't, um, if a business has to stay closed so long and they can't open back up, then the city of Birmingham won't be able to collect that business license fee. And when you add all of that together, you can see how that 85 cent takes a hit. Well, we will actually have tangible numbers in 12 days. April 20th, the city of Birmingham, along with every other city in the state of Alabama, in addition to the state of Alabama, will know the taxes it collected for the month of March. And that will give us a better um, I guess synopsis on how bad is this COVID-19 affecting the city ability to collect its taxes and fees in order to provide services to the city, which includes 70 cent of every dollar that goes out goes to the people on this phone. That's you all. That's your salary. That's your um, COLA. That's your longevity. That's your marriage. That's your insurance. That's your pension. And so the, the goal is we are in a wait-and-see approach right now. But I needed to break that down for you all so you can understand how the city receives money so you can know how it goes out. If we don't receive it, it's going to be hard to make it go out. So right now, everyone on this phone need to know that the administration is doing everything it can to make sure the people remain employed on this phone call. It's the number one priority. Rick. Thank you, ma'am. Before I ask my next question, we're going to open up our next poll question. Uh, this deals with, uh, uh, bear with me, Got the, we hit the wrong question. Just one moment, please. Actually, while we queue that question up, I'll go on and ask another question from our callers. Uh, this next question, will employees have to use their own sick time in order to receive COVID testing if their crew member tested positive? No. I'm going to keep the one word answers if I can so we can get to as many questions as possible. The answer is no. So our next question, and I'll preface this, and I'd like to bring Ms. Medizic back on this question. Uh, we are receiving a lot of questions, and Mr. Mayor is going to be here, but we're receiving a lot of questions about hazard pay. Uh, we just kind of we'll update you on that, but I'll ask this question to the mayor first. For security guards at City Hall, uh, will they be receiving hazard pay? The answer is yes. Security guards will receive hazard pay because they are a classic definition of making regular, direct, customer, residential contact with the public that are non-city employees. And uh, if I may bring in also Ms. Medizic, I know we're having a lot of questions about hazard pay. Uh, you're, you're combining a list that we can, 
put out publicly to all employees, correct? Yes, I mean, I anticipate that list will be ready sometime tomorrow. We're working with the directors of the departments to make sure that we've captured all of the relevant employees. The next question, uh, and I think we may need to clarify this when we say Jefferson County, but why are we allowing Jefferson County to determine our worker status? And uh, will the extra pay be taxed and at what percent? I'll answer the first part of the question as it relates to um, the clarifying when you say Jefferson County, because I think I know what you mean. I will let Ms. Jill Medazic of Human Resources address the second question as it relates to will the hazard pay be taxed. I think actually the answer to that is yes. yes. The answer, so yes, hazard pay will be taxed. So I just answered that. The first part of the question, Jefferson County Personnel Board is the arm, which is the umbrella organization for multiple cities within Jefferson County. I think the city of Birmingham has been under the personnel board for well over 20, over what, 40 years? Maybe, maybe close to 70 years, actually. Um, and so certain guidelines are dictated by this umbrella organization that many of you all are very well aware of that dictates certain things and certain rules that all cities within the personnel board have to follow. Thank you, Mayor. Our, our next question, uh, how far back will, back will, will you go from uh, hazard pay or is it as of today's date? Hazard pay will start next Monday on the next pay period. Thank you, Mayor. One moment while we get to the next question. And again, we're going through a lot of questions that are very similar on hazard pay, so I'm working through these. So what is the proper procedure when dealing with a coworker whose family member has tested positive for COVID-19, what should the employees that have worked with that employee do? I'll let Ms. McDonough answer that question. At this time, those employees should merely self-monitor. Secondary uh, contact with someone who has been in contact with a person who tested positive does not justify receiving a test. If you do have concerns because of underlying medical issues, you should reach out to your own physician to see if testing will be ordered. Okay, now we're going to go back to our poll question earlier that I started and we just had to, to pause on that. This question deals with COVID-19 testing. Have you or anyone in your household been tested for COVID-19? Once again, have you or anyone in your household been tested for COVID-19? Press 1 for yes, press 2 for no. Once again, I just opened that poll. so. Uh, uh, answer now, have you or anyone in your household been tested for COVID-19? Press one for yes, press two for no. We will keep this question open for about three minutes and we will come back to it. Okay, our next question. How much real exposure does the mayor's staff, finance and other departments at City Hall have to the public to be considered essential since most of City Hall is closed? Um, as much as everyone else who receives hazard pay. So let me define what this is. Um, there are finance, um, there are employees in the finance department that I define as working in called the cage that interact with the public all day while they're at the job. Um, in interaction, um, in that office that's open to the right and to the well to the right if you're in the building and to the left as it relates to the cage exchanging information etc even with that barrier that exists that is direct customer contact during their regular hours of working the mayor's office those employees are not here on the third floor those employees are actually the finance security guards who make sure we are safe in this building by checking every and all um, people that walk into this building. So they have a high exposure. Thank you, Mayor. Our next question concerns N95 masks. They were given to employees, but if a mask break, uh, should employees still continue to enter homes? Will more N95 masks be distributed? Second part of that question, more masks will be distributed. As it relates to entering home, I would imagine um, there's additional kits um, for these employees who are pulling up to an actual home 
the only two departments that would pull up to a person's home would be the police department and fire. All right, thank you, Mayor. Our next question, will there be a chance for every employee to be tested even if they are asymptomatic? Um, the, uh, the answer to that is no. Um, I think, as I shared with you all on our last call, the priority of those who are tested are defined as the following. If you're actually feeling any of the symptoms, um, if someone has tested positive that you've possibly come into contact with, and the third is if, a, if you are given an excuse from your doctor to actually go get tested. Okay, uh, I'm going to remind folks on the poll question. We're going to close this and try to get one more question in. Uh, you got 15 seconds to respond to this. It's dealing with testing. Uh, have you or anyone that in your household been tested for COVID-19? Press 1 for yes. Press 2 for no. We have 15 seconds to answer that one, and we will try to slide one more question in to you as we try to continue to answer as many questions as possible during the time we have here. Uh, so, so press and answer that if you have not already. Uh, our next question deals with cleaning. Why is the fire administration building not being deep cleaned? Um, the short version is very simple. Um, the buildings that are being deep cleaned notice that they have a, they all have a consistent pattern. Um, the admin building of the of the police department, the city hall, municipal court, and the city jail have the following things in common. Outside of the actual city employees. Residents from our city and community actually come into those facilities. Um, there is no one from the public that comes into the admin building for the um, for the fire department. A uh, very similar question: Will deep cleaning take place in the communications department? Uh, one has not been done yet, even though it's in city hall. This is nine one one three one one. I'm going to let. Um, Kevin Moore, my Chief of Operations, or Jill McDodgett, answered that question. Due to the sensitivity of uh, that particular area, uh, the communications area is being cleaned uh, internally by, uh, by the staff down at 311 and, and 911. Uh, and the district brings in cleaners. And the, and the district brings in cleaners to assist with that cleaning. Okay, I'm going to ask you uh, one more, one final question to you. Would you be tested if it were readily available? Would you be tested for COVID-19? Press one for yes. Press two for no. Uh, once again, if, if if it were readily available, would you be tested for COVID-19? Press one for yes. Press two for no. Uh, I'm going to give me one moment while I go through these questions. Uh, stand by as we try to pull up the next questions. I believe this is this this person is asking why did a department remain open when COVID-19 was diagnosed with an employee? Um, because the um, departments remain open because we still have to serve um, the public as it relates to being an essential service. That's one. Two, when we do our tracking and tracing and investigate what happened. Many times we find that whatever happened it didn't necessarily actually take place here at City Hall. Three, with the combination of our daily cleaning and our weekend deep cleaning, we're in a position to keep um, our mode of operations going. What we do is remove that person or any people that have come into contact with that person and or that equipment and or that vehicle to make sure no one else actually comes into contact with that person or that equipment. I'm going to ask another question that we've been touching on just to, just to remind folks one more time. Uh, we have very, very detailed questions about hazard pay. Why is the finance department receiving hazard pay? There are a handful of finance department employees who do a great job of interacting with the public forward-facing customers every single day that brings them to contact of possibly getting the COVID-19. So again, uh, this is along the same line of will the downtown cleaning crew and the downtown refuge collection crew receive hazard pay? As we mentioned earlier, uh, Ms. Medizic, 
uh, and HR is uh, putting together. We've, we've got a list that we're going to finalize to put uh, up in public forum that we will put up at birminghamal.gov slash coronavirus. We will put that up as early as tomorrow so everybody can, kind of, they can take a look at that. The answer is yes. I buried the lead on that, Mayor. <laughs> Just one moment. Going through here, there's, we're kind of moving through because we got a lot of, of uh, hazard pay related questions. So trying to identify, one moment please. Are there any opportunities for other benefits for essential employees who may not, ha may not receive hazard pay? Um, no, there's not. You all need to remember, there are a little less than 90 days in the current fiscal year. Uh, um, you know, we were fortunate to find the money for April for hazard pay. Um, and we are not even in a position today to tell you if that will be able to continue for May. And I set that up to say this. Um, it's not, we're not the federal government. Money doesn't grow on trees. We can't just print money. Um, the monies that have been allocated when the budget was approved last year for the, fis for the start of the fiscal year, July 1, that ends this June 30th, which is less than 90 days, any monies that already exist are already allocated to go towards certain obligations. So there is no additional money um, at this point to do any additional things. Um, the good news is, you know, that COLA, that 1%, we did find that, and we made, we made hold on our COLA. In addition to that, for those forward-facing employees, which is a little, a little over half of our employees, are receiving hazard pay. We're doing everything we can within our power to provide um, something to give to our employees who are making sacrifices. Okay, stand by one moment while I go through this. I want to remind everybody, if your question has not been answered on this, you can stay on the line, press 7, stay on the line, and you'll still be able to record your question uh, with our screeners. I uh, do want to remind you of that. Um, also, I want to remind you that within an hour after this, we plan to uh, we plan to answer uh, or we plan to post this teletown hall recording on BirminghamAL.gov/coronavirus. That's BirminghamAL.gov/coronavirus. Uh, we will post that teletown hall like we do with all of our teletown halls at that location for you to listen to it once again, or you can share this call with others. Uh, our next question. Uh, are the DPW supervisors eligible for hazardous pay since they come in contact with employees and the public? Well, the answer to that is if some supervisors make direct contact with the public, those will receive hazard pay. Or supervisors does, that does not make contact with the public, you will not receive hazard pay. I'm going, to, I'm going to ask another question. We answered this earlier, but just as a reminder for folks, what, what's the start date for the hazardous pay? Does it start as of yesterday, or do we have to wait to receive it? Hazard pay will start on the start of the next pay period, which is Monday. Okay, stand by. We're going through. I'm trying to find some questions. We've been answering the uh, hazard pay questions. We're trying to see if we can track down some uh, additional questions as well. Um, does the city get reimbursed for the hazard pay money from the federal government? As of today, the answer is no. We are working with our federal lobbyists as well as those our federal delegation, which includes Senator Doug Jones, Senator Richard Shelby, as well as Congresswoman Terry Sewell, that cities be considered in the next package uh, for direct payments. In addition to that, that hazard pay be a part of reimbursements going forward, as well as for those cities who have already enacted it, grandfathered in to receive reimbursement. But today the answer is no. Our next question, aside from doing my job, are there any volunteer opportunities so that we can assist the community at this time? Uh, whatever caller asked this question, thank you so much. That's a very great um, question you asked, and I want to I wanna appreciate you. Um, the answer is um, the Beham Strong, I want to see and direct you to either behamstrong.com. That's behamstrong.com has a way for you to volunteer your services now or United Way. Their 211 number allows you to assist 
and various community service activities right here in the city limits of Birmingham. Yeah, that's the 211 number with the United Way, so the 211 number. Our next question, have we established a system from learning about COVID-19 from other cities? Have we been able to learn from other cities about practices dealing with COVID-19? Yes, we have. I, um, there are a couple of things that's happening. I, I continue to stay in contact with many mayors across the nation um, on a daily basis, believe it or not. And a part of a, what's called a Bloomberg Harvard class that I've participated in a year with 39 other mayors across the entire globe, um, they've been in constant contact with us, uh, webinars, and other various forms of communication, which include email and by phone, um, sharing information on how and what cities should be doing to flatten the curve in our community. Um, yes, we need state assistance and help. Yes, we need federal assistance and help. But at the beginning and end of the day, um, what's going to happen in the Birmingham community is going to depend on us as citizens and local leadership to drive flattening this curve. Our next question, are we under SWIFT or not? No, we're not. Bear with me for one moment. I have a correction on SWIFT. I'm going to allow... Um, Kevin Moore, who's over operations for the city of Birmingham, to follow up and address the SWIFT question. Uh, yes, uh, the fire department, uh, Chief Moon, activated SWIFT about two weeks ago. So, yes, we are under SWIFT at this time. For fire, for fire just to clarify. Fire, so fire is under SWIFT. Yes. Okay, our next question, is there any allocation for hand sanitizer for the fire department stations? At this point, no. Okay, at this time, are you just requisition the Department of Public Works? I mean, excuse me, requisition uh, through the Finance Department for your hand sanitizer. Stand by. So here's the next question. In the event, and this kind of relates to what you were talking about earlier about tax revenue coming in. In the event tax dollars don't come in, will employees have an option to forego the COLA raise to ensure that employees aren't laid off? Um, I think um, if we're going to be real candid about this conversation, when you when you speak to the following, I would say, six things that are on the table um, when we talk about employees, one is your base salary, uh, two is your merit, three is your COLA, four is your longevity, uh, five is kind of how we calculate insurance, and six would be pension. That is in no particular order, but those six things make up of how we engage that 70 cent of every dollar that goes out. Because of that, uh, we will, if, if the 85 cent, if the 80 plus cent of the dollar that's coming in is lower, then it's going to be hard to maintain the 70 cent that goes out addressing those six things. So I imagine we may have to look at one or two of those things. But we're not in a position to say say that today because everything now, um, we don't have tangible numbers of what we actually lost for the month of March. And remember, whatever we lost in March, it will be a bigger loss in April, which we won't find out until May 20th what happened in April. But if we were out a few weeks in March, we're out all of April. So this will be hard, but I don't have an answer for how it will look yet. All right, thank you, Mayor. Our next question, and this I believe probably uh, goes to the distribution, I mean, the, or the, uh, the disturbance in work schedules that a lot of folks have, have faced. Uh, the question is, my start date was April 15, 2019. Will my evaluation be conducted after we return to work full time to verify that I'm eligible for a pay increase? And will it be paid from that point, or will I receive back pay from 4 15 20 until that point? Everyone who is being evaluated during this period of time or who should be evaluated will receive their annual evaluation. I do anticipate for most employees it will be after we get through COVID-19. And if the employee is entitled to a step increase, it goes back to the date of their anniversary. So it will go back to April 15th. I believe I know what this individual is asking, uh, but, but I'm going to read it and I think, uh, uh, and, and we'll clarify if I need to, but 
Uh, would you make an appeal to the citizens regarding trash so that, uh, that when they put the trash out, it protects workers? Um, yes, we can do that. You know, but we, you know, we're very kind as a city. I'm one of the few cities in the in the state of Alabama that picks up trash two days a week. We're also one of the few cities in the state that picks up anything. And what I mean by that, most cities not only pick up only one day a week, but you have a uniform trash bin, and if it's not in that trash bin, it doesn't get picked up. And so the way we engage trash as a city and a community, um, our employees do have a right to be concerned. The good news is the safety measures that they currently had in place prior to the COVID-19, they're still using now. But I imagine they're taking extra precaution as well. But yes, you all should also know um, that residential trash is picked up because um, a lot of people are working from home as well as school is not in. We've seen a minimum of a 25% increase in residential trash pickup, which is a lot. Um, but we will continue to stress not only to our employees to be safe, we will encourage our um, community and our residents uh, to please watch how they engage their own trash because city employees are picking it up. Our next question, do you know if open enrollment for health insurance will remain on schedule? Open enrollment will remain on schedule. It will be the last two weeks of May. But at this point, we anticipate it will be a passive enrollment, which means unless you want to make changes, you will not have to take any action to keep your benefits in place. Our next question, if we are still shelter in place but had scheduled vacation in the system, can we just cancel it and not count against us? No. Stand by. Let me pull up the next question. So the next question, and I know this is one that health, public health has, has responded to as well, will the city accept donated handmade masks to distribute to employees? That's a good question. That's not a question we've entertained, so I don't have an answer today. I think our main priority for additional masks has been with our, our doctors and, our, and other medical staff, such as nurses, et cetera, who have continue to share privately and publicly, they have a shortage. So the priority of donated masks has been with them. Um, we have not um, participated in that conversation, but I tell you what, um, we can talk among ourselves and we can follow up and get an answer to our employees and to the public if we will be accepting donated masks. If, if I may add to that as well, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, I am on a daily phone call with the UAB and Public Health Department. Um, and uh, one of the things at, to this point for hospitals is while they thank folks for providing the donated mask, for the hospital staff, uh, they are not currently using donated masks. Uh, at the same time, that has changed kind of on a national recommendation for the general public. Uh, so what I can do as well is when I'm on the phone with, uh, with public health and, and UAB tomorrow, I will uh, ask that question and see if we can get some guidance for it and put that out in an email, all users email as well. Uh, stand by for just one moment, uh, just to let you know, we still have a number of people on the call. Uh, we have many, many phone, uh, many, many questions. Many of them are very similar about hazardous, hazardous pay. Um, just, just to kind of, for those who may have joined, uh, I'll go on and ask one of the hazard pay questions again, uh, so we can restate this. Um, uh, they kind of range. What's the? I'm going to kind of throw several at you. What's the start date of hazard pay? Uh, that is one of the questions, and then a lot of folks asking for clarification if they uh, receive hazard pay. Is the construction department eligible to receive hazard pay? So we got start date, construction, and other pieces. The Jefferson County Personnel Board has indicated that hazard premium pay is applicable to employees working in situations that have high potential for exposure to COVID-19 through direct public contact. That direct public contact is customer service positions with regular direct customer contact during the period of the pandemic as it relates to on your job, do you engage in making daily contact with the public um, in person through conversation or the exchange of something such as money or papers or in the courtroom or a police officer, or a firefighter, 
or part of the rescue service team or permits where you deal with the public um, on the front line. So for construction, if you are all, any of the above and you deal with the public, then the answer is yes. If you don't actually engage the public, the answer is no. And if I may add to that as well, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, the Office of Public Information is going to be working with uh, Human Resources to post um, post that listing of, of positions uh, as early as tomorrow. It'll be at BirminghamAL.gov slash coronavirus. Correct. In addition to that, um, hazard pay will kick in start of the next start of the next pay period, which is this Monday, and it will be for the next two pay periods only. We asked this question earlier. I'm going to follow up with a with a follow. I'm going to have a follow up on it. Why is City Hall pilot project not being treated the same as the other routes? I believe this in particular deals with recycling. We had to make the call that if you start something, you should not stop it. And this pilot program literally just started about five days ago. And so important that if we want to expand this pilot program throughout the, the all of the city, that you keep this pilot program going, which is only a few months. For those small handful of employees um, that are sacrificing and working this extra day when everybody else is getting an additional day off, I want to thank them. And we as a city and leadership team will continue to uh, get in the lab and be creative and innovative with finding ways um, to make them whole and offset them working the fifth day. Our next question, can we get hand sanitizer at the time clock? This comes from uh, a construction. I think we can work on that. This is a follow-up to a question uh, that we answered earlier, but I think it, it, it's worth following up on this again. Can you advise to the location of the person uh, diagnosed with COVID. And we're going to leave it at as one of our city employees. I think important to point out too that those who have come, with, uh, as as with the release that you put out earlier, Mr. Mayor, those who came into contact, uh, direct contact, and worked closely with them have also been notified. Correct. That is correct. Bear with me while I find uh, our next question. Has the city received any federal funding at this time? We've received. Um, Community block block grant money, CDBG funds, but they're not up front. We would have to spend our own money, which we don't have, to be reimbursed. So the, the actual short answer is no. We did also come into um, the Department of Justice, um, gave a grant to the police department, uh, but they told us it would be a few days before they can actually um, draw down on those funds. Bear with me while I pull the next question up. Okay, this is dealing with Sarah, uh, City Hall. Please clarify the two recycling routes that are going to continue to operate. There are two recycling routes that exist in the city of Birmingham. Uh, well, let me start over. There are two routes of all the routes that exist in the city of Birmingham that are a part of a joint pilot program. The joint pilot program includes a uniform trash bin and a uniform recycle bin for over 2,000 households. So everyone in the neighborhood won't receive um, or participate in the U-Haul project. It is based on if you're on these two routes. For these two routes, these residents, these 2,000 plus residents have already received their uniform trash bin and their uniform recycle bin. Um, in addition to that, we will only pick up trash at those households once a week, and we will only pick up recycling in those households only once a week. And that is on Wednesday. Uh, Mayor, if, if, if I can refer folks for reference, uh, if, you, if you would like to learn more about that, you can go to BirminghamAL.gov slash City Hall. Uh, the areas where uh, City Hall is in, is in is working right now, there are maps at that location. It's a large portion of Roebuck, parts of Forest Park, parts of Crestwood South, parts of East Avondale, and parts of Woodland Park as well. So if you need more information on that, that's the information. That's where you can go. Uh, stand by while we pull up another question. Just one moment.
So this may be a clarification. Uh, coming into contact with coworkers, is that hazardous? No. Stand by just a moment. Going backwards a little bit here to see. Again, we have a lot of questions. I think we've responded to this, but a lot of questions about when hazard pay will begin. That will be uh, Monday is when it kicks in. Hazard pay will be on your next two pay periods. And currently it is designed where it is at one month. It's one month of hazard pay at this time, correct? Yes, one month of hazard pay is um, extended over two pay periods. I can correct that. Correct me. Yes, please correct me. The hazardous due pay, hazardous pay does start on Monday, but employees need to remember that we get paid two weeks in arrears. So what we receive two weeks from tomorrow um, will be for what we're working this two weeks. So it will be an additional two weeks before employees see that hazardous due pay in their paycheck. Thank you. So everyone, I'm looking at the questions as they come in. The next, literally, literally about the next 10 questions are all around hazard pay. So I want to repeat this for you because I think it's important. As indicated, individuals eligible for hazard pay was guided by the Jefferson County Personnel Board. The Jefferson County Personnel Board indicated that hazard premium pay is applicable for to those employees working in situations that have high potential for exposure to the COVID-19 through direct public contact based on the job they do. Examples include public safety, healthcare, frontline customer service positions. Those frontline customer service positions exist in the courthouse. Those frontline customer service positions exist in finance. Those frontline customer service positions exist in PEP. Those frontline customer service positions exist in the mayor's office related to the security guards on the first floor. Those other regular direct customer contact jobs include police, fire, and public works. If your job does not put you in a position to have direct frontline customer service where there's you make close proximity or physical contact through the exchange of papers with the public money or, or whatever that is then you will not qualify for hazard pay thank you mayor a couple of questions on schedules I do not know which department this individual works in, but they currently work a 5-8 schedule. Uh, are there, I'll ask it in a broader way, are there any plans to move to 4-10 uh, for other departments or other work groups? For now, the only departments that are 4-10 uh, uh, will be police and public works. And another question which we received early on, but I'm going to ask this one again, is uh, 10 hours, how is 10 hours keeping public works safe? Uh, we all... We'll, well, I can't read quite that second part, but uh, the 10 hour, the the, uh, the, the 410 schedule, uh, what is the idea behind that to keep people safe? The idea is for people to work 40 hours a week and still get an extra day off. All right, everybody. Um, we've reached a point where we've attempted to address um, most of the questions, or all of the questions. I think the remaining questions still centered around hazard pay. More information will be provided from HR as well as all users. Um, everybody on this phone is important to me. Um, we may have different titles. We may have different positions. We may have different job descriptions, but we're all part of the Birmingham um, um, city as it relates to being employees. Um, that makes us a work family. Um, we're not going to always see things alike. 
Um, we may not always agree on things, but we all have the same mission. And that mission is to put people first and to continue to serve, provide services to the public. Our residents are depending on us, and we have a job to do. I want to thank you all for making the sacrifices of still coming to work, and even, even putting your cape on, knowing that there's fear and anxiety among you. You all still toe the line. You all still bust your butts. You all still work hard every day. You all still provide that service. You all still do it with a smile. I simply want to say thank you. I'm proud to be your mayor. I'm proud to serve and work with you. And just like you, I'm coming to work every day as well. We will get through this together. Please continue to be safe and know that I'm thinking about you. And have a good day. Just a reminder to everybody who's still on the line, thank you, Mayor, for, for, your, for your remarks and answering the questions today. If you have any additional questions, you can press 7. Uh, screeners will be on the line to take your questions, so press 7 even after this call ends, and you will still be able to, uh, to uh, provide your question. Uh, we will post this on birminghamal.gov slash coronavirus. Probably within an hour or so, it will take a little time to upload the uh, audio uh, file. And we will have it there. You can go and you can re-listen to it, or you can share it with uh, coworkers who were not able to listen to it. Uh, one other reminder, we because there are a lot of questions about hazard pay, the Office of Public Information will be working with uh, Human Resources uh, to pull together the, uh, the, the complete list of, of, of uh, positions uh, qualifying for hazard pay, and we will put that at birminghamal.gov slash coronavirus as early as tomorrow. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for your service to the city. Uh, thank you for your commitment. Uh, thank you for joining us on this call, and have a good day.